So ChatGPT recently released GPT-40 with Canvas. It's making a lot of waves. So let's see what it's all about. So if you remember my video from a few months ago when Claude released Artifact, I talked about why I decided to move over to Claude and actually pay for it. Because this is really good. This is really good. So let's see what GPT-40 with Canvas can do and if it's good enough for me to go back to ChatGPT full time. All right, so if you go into your ChatGPT account and if you're on the paid plan, you're gonna see this model called ChatGPT GPT 4.0 with Canvas. It is exact same model as 4.0, but with a new interface, which they're calling it as Canvas. If you don't have a paid plan, don't worry about it. I got you. Just watch the video. I'm going to show you everything you need to know so you can decide for yourself if there's something you want to upgrade the account for or just stick with a free plan. So like, you know, when you use the 4.0 model with Canvas, you have the same options for inspiration, which sort of like, I think ChatGPT's way of saying or kind of giving you ideas what you should use it for. It's like, you know, making plans, brainstorming, analyzing images, creating images, coding or just like writing stuff. So let's keep things simple for now. And we're just going to start off with a simple writing task with GPT-40 with Canvas. So I'm just going to say here, can you just write a blog on like rapid development and generative AI space is going to impact humanity the next 50 years? Just a random topic. Just want to show you like how the whole thing works. As soon as we hit enter, we're going to see a new window pop up. And that's very similar to Claude Artifact. If anybody who uses Claude, this is how the Claude works as well with the Artifact mode, where they have like a separate window for you to do more collaboration and more visualization of the results being generated by the model. So here we have a basically what you would see like in a text input in the chat format, but now we have a separate window and I'll tell you why this window is separate here. So on the right here, now we're gonna see like a whole bunch of options now to sort of like play uh, with the text being generated. We have an option to adjust the length of the text. So we can go like make the whole results very short to very long. If I just make it longer, it's gonna keep the same structure and the points that was addressed early on, but just make the text bit longer the same way if you make it shorter it's going to do the same or if you look at the reading level option so you could quickly rewrite the text based on the reading level you're looking for so the reading level goes from like kindergarten to all the way up to graduate so instead of basically like optimizing a prompt or like having a more elaborate prompt like you know who is a four was a reading level how long you want it to be just making it more easier for you to work with the text being generated so you can get exactly what you're looking for instead of writing the prompts over and over again. Also, if you go to the emoji button up top, what you're gonna do is just gonna throw a whole bunch of emojis in your text. I don't know if it's super useful, but hey, I mean, someone on the product team thought that people love emojis, so we should add it as a feature. I think it's way too many emojis right now. I wish there was like a scale again to sort of like figure out how much emojis do I want. But you know, they're trying to make it collaborative here, so I'll give them that. And then the other option you're gonna see here is polish. So once you have your text, what you were looking for, you hit refine, it's just gonna like, you know, make sure it's all well structured, all the grammatical, mistakes and everything is taken care of. I mean, that should happen in the first place. You can edit your own text into it and stuff. So just making sure you can does a final proofread for you so we can be more lazier. So this is Canvas. So you're saying like, oh, cool. It's just like a, you know, chat GPT. Instead of prompts, I just have these buttons to do things. Nope. They're calling it Canvas because they want the whole experience to start looking like more collaborative experience. What that means is that right now, in this workspace, in this window on the right, you can actually start editing whatever you want. So like you can actually just use your keyboard, you can add things wherever you want. You can like, you know, make the text bold, you can make the text italics. So they're trying to like go from just a text generating thing into more collaborative engine where humans and AI sort of work together. Or in other words, they just want to kill a lot of competition out there that is making, you know, AI text being more editable and stuff like integrated into the existing workflows. And the other thing you can do here is whatever text text you want to select instead of giving the command or the prompt into the whole blog you can just select the text that you want to change or have questions about just select it you're gonna see this little icon on the right side click on it now you can say like hey rephrase this part maybe add an example or like just explain it to me like a five like what this means so you can really kind of like start collaborating with this uh, more and more intuitively than before so that's what pretty much like the idea of their canvas is and of course it is not just limited to the text you can write it also works with code so here um I'm just gonna like do a quick chat on like writing a sample code function for just random things. So we're just gonna maybe do like a notes app where you can do something like slash command for options like 
kind of notion. Again, I don't know if this code's gonna work or not. I'm not gonna test it. I'm just gonna show you what this canvas sort of looks like within chat GPT. Okay, here we have some code. Just like before, we have an option here to just sort of select the code that we wanna like, you know, talk to or fix or whatnot and just type whatever command you want. For example, I can just sort of select some text over like what kind of components can the user add within this function or whatnot and it's gonna give me the answer. I can just select the part of the function I'll be like, hey, can you explain me what's happening here? We have an option to add comments. So let's say if we just wanna add a comment here, boom. So it's just gonna literally go through every line of the code and it's just gonna add comments. It's easier for readability and all that stuff. We have an option to add logs. Now it's kind of like adding those all the sprint statements and everything everywhere so that way when we are running the code we get all those logs and actually see what's happening and then of course when you do logs you want to make sure where are the bugs so the next feature is actually to fix bugs so single click of a button it's actually going to go through the whole code and try to identify if there are any bugs and it's going to fix it for us so i think all these features are actually quite intuitive like pretty much what the workflow would be like okay again i'm not a software engineer anymore i did go to school for that and i did like one internship in qa so i kind of like understand the whole bug fixing part of things but again i'm not a software engineer so like just take this part of the video with a grain of salt because i'm not involved in the daily coding whatsoever the other option is to like port the language you can just port the code into multiple different languages or you can just do a code review so we already have logs we already have the comments now it's suggesting me that i should consider renaming the function that's called main game loop for better readability it's presenting to my peer programmer and telling me what i should fix i mean you did it you should have known what to f you have to do it but if you have your own code and you put it in there, it could be really seamless to like just quickly add all those comments, add the status logs, do a peer like a code review quickly, and you could make your code a lot more readable and hopefully more functional as well as a result of using these features. So this is kind of like the idea of like chat GPT canvas where the whole experience is uh, trying to be more collaborative with us working with this tool. So we don't have to go use third party external tools. Everything is gonna happen within ChatGPT. We can just come and do our thing and exit with our final product. I mean, you know, we can always have integrations with Zapier again to get the final product into whichever app you wanna do. So there's one more thing, which is new to Canvas, which I wanna just quickly touch on. So before, if I were to generate a chart or like of a data, I just wanna like plot it, I wouldn't be able to make it interactive. As you can see here, if I just kind of hover over it, it says the interactive functionality is actually not available. However, if we go to 40 with Canvas and we plot the same chart, now we have an option to make the chart interactive. So here, like I have an interactive bar chart and I can even change the colors. Again, it's not much, it's not groundbreaking feature or anything. It just shows you like where the canvas is headed. I think they just wanted to release the first version this year so they can get all the initial feedback. But I'm pretty sure like in 2025, their big focus is gonna be within their canvas and trying to make sure that they can stay ahead of all their competitors. Speaking of competitors, how does this compare to Claude Artifact? So I wanted to do a test. So the reasons I love Claude so much, I mean, there are a whole bunch, but like the one of the reasons I love Claude so much now is because it can actually generate the code, but it can also visualize it. You can interact with it. For example, let's say you have like you want to build flashcards, you want to do quizzes, you want to do like you know any of that stuff. You want to write code, you want to build games. All of that is possible within Claude Artifact. It does not just generate the code, but it actually like gives you a way to interact with it as well. So we're gonna just look at two quick examples. The second one is actually really fun. So for the blog we just generated earlier, I'm just gonna ask 408 Canvas if we can turn that into an interactive flashcard or whatnot. And here it just says what the flashcards are going to look like, but it actually doesn't do the job. However, if we do the same in Claude, it is going to turn them into a flashcard that we can sort of like click and navigate through. I mean, this particular one isn't like great because it has like some text overlap, but again, I can just fix that with a prompt or two. And uh, let's say if we can build a game using ChatGPT Canvas. So here I'm just gonna ask it to like build a snake game that I can play with just my keyboard. And here ChatGPT 08 Canvas and its new window, it's gonna generate me the code for the game, but there is no way for me to play within ChatGPT. So I'll actually literally have to export the code and like build a project in Python and run the code in Python. But for some people like, you know, that's too overwhelming. So let's see if Claude can actually do that for us. So here I'm gonna go to Claude. I'm gonna ask it to do the same and uh, it's doing its thing and yeah. Here we are. We actually have a game I can play right now. So I can just use like my arrow keys here in the game and I'm gonna eat my food as a snake and I'm getting my score and my snake's getting longer like how this game snake game works. So that gets the job done. So that's pretty useful. I guess uh, Claude is still has a bit of an edge over ChatGPT in terms of like its artifact feature versus Canvas. Just in terms of like, you know, the core preview part of it. 
But in terms of collaboration, within Claude, there's still no way to sort of collaborate the way the Canvas is letting us collaborate right now. So it's interesting to see where both these tools are going to go in the next year, which direction they pick and like, you know, how well it's going to turn out for them. So this is what ChatGPT4 with Canvas looks like. I mean, right now, my team and I were paying for both because like my team loves using ChatGPT for code and I'm using Claude for all of my writing work and brainstorming work. So I mean, technically we're paying for both right now again. But uh, you decide for yourself uh, which one is going to be best suited for you. Give it a try. Again, you know, there are a bunch of tools. All the tools have free plans as well. But software is never free. It's always freemium kind of thing. So, of course, you're never going to find something that's really good and it's going to be free forever. But yeah, anyway, uh, I'm going to stop yapping here. I hope the video was useful for you. You learned something new. And uh, for more tools and tutorials and to keep up with the S space, subscribe to the channel and like the video if this was useful. And I'll see you in the next videos.